Hi, this is Andrew Aversa with Impact Soundworks. Today, we'll be looking at our flagship acoustic drum kit library, Tokyo Scoring Drum Kits, the second entry into our Tokyo Scoring series. Recorded at the legendary Sound City Studio, the same one as Tokyo Scoring Strings, we've captured five drum kits performed by top session player Ken Higashiro, plus an acoustic drum kit ensemble. Everything was engineered and mixed by Mitsunori Aizawa, one of Japan's most in-demand engineers. And you can hear drums like these all over Japanese anime soundtracks, games, films, and albums of all genres. From jazz and funk to rock and metal and epic scores, the kits selected here cover a huge range. This isn't just an authentic tool for Japanese style scoring, it's a damn good drum library. So let's jump right in and hear what it sounds like. We'll start with the Aizawa Mix All Kits Patch. These patches, uh, the Aizawa mixes, feature samples processed by Mr. Aizawa using his signature outboard gear for a very polished sound out of the box. Next up, we'll check out the Aizawa Mix Drum Ensemble Patch. All right, let's switch to the full mixer all kits patch to show how the UI of Tokyo Scoring Drum Kits works. Now the full mixer patches are a different set of samples than the Aizawa mixes. These do not have any extra outboard processing and offer more mic channels, giving you maximum control over your mix. In any of these all kits patches, you can swap drum kit pieces by clicking on the drum, then clicking the label and selecting something new. Simple as that. When we replace a snare, you'll hear that it replaces all mapped snare articulations. We can also do adjustments to each drum in the same pop-up UI. For example, we can tune our snare, or adjust the volume envelope of the toms if we want them to ring out less, for example. Let's pop over to the console tab for a moment. Console is a full mixer and modular effects rack featured in many of our instruments, but it's particularly powerful here. As you can see, each individual mic channel has its own strip. You can mix, add effects, and route each of these channels to your DAW outputs individually. In all of our demos, we only used console for drum mixing. That should give you an idea of how powerful it can be. Let's listen to some of the snapshots other than the default drum kits to see how console is being used.
Now going back to the main kit page, a very powerful and very useful feature we have is the sub mixer. If we click on our snare and click the mix button, we now have control over how much snare is sent to each of these channels. A simple adjustment would be reducing the amount of room sound from the ambient near, mid, and far mics. You'll notice this does not affect the overall balance in console, and it won't affect the other kit pieces. With this alone, you can really fine tune your kit and get just the right amount of direct versus overhead and ambient signal. Worth noting, the submixer applies to all drums or pieces of the same type. So for example, if we go to the toms, increasing the overhead for low tom increases it for the other toms as well. The bleed tab is more for advanced users. Where the mix tab shows you the direct signals for that kit piece, plus the overheads and ambient mics, the bleeds are all the other mics. For example, we can dial in some snare signal for the kick. In other words, we'll hear the kick as it's being picked up through the snare mic. We can do the same for other bleed mics. Doing this does cost more memory and CPU, which is why all bleeds are disabled in the default kits. Plus, honestly, you probably don't want to mix in too much of this anyway, but the functionality is there if you want it. Moving on, let's check the settings tab. This one is pretty simple for the most part, but at the bottom you'll notice we have three playback modes, zero latency, standard, and look ahead. These all affect how much pre-attack sound you hear in the samples. When we edited the library, we left in up to 120 milliseconds before each hit, each transient. And even though it's quiet, there's a lot of detail in that 120 milliseconds, like the sound of the drumstick rushing through the air or the kick beater. As far as I know, most libraries don't include this because it adds latency and delays playback. That's why you have the option to choose your playback mode here. Zero latency mode is like any other drum library. The samples are played back right before the transient, eliminating any latency and giving you the most responsive feel when you play. Standard moves the sample start back 40 milliseconds, so you're hearing an extra 40 milliseconds of extra audio per sample. Finally, look ahead is the full 120 milliseconds. There's also a sync flam option in this mode, which will make it so that the flams play back on the beat, anticipating the beat, rather than needing to be triggered a little bit before. As with anything that adds latency, you will need to use a negative track delay in your DAW, or you can shift the Tokyo Scoring Drum Kit's MIDI back in time, or shift everything else in your project forward to compensate for the latency. There are different ways to do it. Finally, we'll switch to the Map tab. I covered this in another video in more detail, so I'll just go over it here briefly. You can not only create whatever mapping you want, but you can map multiple kits, multiple pieces of the same type, the same articulation on multiple keys. Just click on a key, then use the browser below to select what articulation you want and double click to assign it. Each individual note has its own volume, pan, and offset controls too. So if there's an articulation that you think is sticking out too much or that needs to be boosted, you can adjust that here.
It's also handy for creating variation, like if you map the same exact kick on B and C with a slight tuning difference. You can check out the full mapping video for more info. I'll wrap up by covering the board mix patches. The board mix is a preset mic mix. These patches are the fastest to load and use by far the least memory and CPU, making them perfect for fast inspiration or working on an older device. Naturally, they sound fantastic as this is Aizawa's ideal all around mix. Now, while there's no control over the amount of overheads or room, no sub mixers and no bleeds, you can still use console to mix between the different kit pieces, adjust panning, tuning and add effects per piece. And that is an overview of Tokyo Scoring Drum Kits. The library is available now with a cross-grade discount for Tokyo Scoring Strings owners. It runs in the free contact player and is fully NKS compatible. In fact, we spent some extra time and attention making sure as many mixed controls as possible were available via NKS. Let us know if you like this approach. I'm incredibly proud of this library, and I hope that it's as fun and inspiring to use for you as it is for us. This has been Andrew Versa, and I'll see you next time.